Hello there, I'm Leonardo Torres and I've got some great news. The Chosen Season 3 has finally arrived. Erica and I went to see Episodes 1 and 2 in theaters and I can't tell you what a great experience that was for us. It was exciting for us to be a part of something that was happening worldwide and, in my opinion, gonna be one of the best things to ever happen to Christian storytelling. The music is beautiful, the cinematography is beautiful, the acting is stellar. Be sure to check out the new episodes on the Angel Studios app. With the Angel Studios app, you'll be able to enjoy all seasons of The Chosen, including the new episodes, on your phone and on every major streaming device. One thing that I love about it is that you can watch it for free and if you love it, you can support future seasons and you can make it free for the next family to watch by paying it forward. In addition to The Chosen, Angel Studios has so many other shows that you and your family can enjoy, including Testament, which is a movie that is going to be turned into a series, The Wing Feather Saga. They also have Dry Bar Comedy, the largest library of family-friendly comedy on the internet, The Tuttle Twins Show, and so much more. Another great feature of the Angel Studios app is that you get to decide what gets Gets created next, making you the gatekeeper of great future content that amplifies light. Click the link to get the Angel Studios app and don't miss the new episodes of The Chosen. That's right, familia. <laughs> welcome, bienvenidos, and welcome every single one of you. I'm excited for today. If you're excited to finish this season with, with us, let us know in the live chat. Let us know how excited you are about this. Uh, I know that some of you I, I've been watching the comments and I noticed that some of you are saying, hey, I hardly ever catch uh, these lives, but that you're excited to be here. So if this is your first time, let us know. Um, let us know so we can give you a proper greeting. We want to give you La Familia greeting, which is a greeting of love and acceptance. And just want to welcome you as part of our, of our global online familia. Um, I'm, I'm wearing my Angel Studio shirt today. <laughs> Yes, this is the last episode of the season, and I'm excited. I I've heard a lot of great things about it. Not specifics, just, dude, you're going to love it. A lot of you said I should have watched this in theaters. I missed it in theaters. I've been super busy. Wasn't going to be able to do it. So shout out to um, um, the people who are new here, like this person here. Come on, man. <laughs> we know you're already you're a veterano here. You're a veteran, man. Come on. Uh, <laughs> Let's see, glad to see you this with you. Welcome, Marjorie. I'm just going to give a quick shout out to everyone here. Winged Heart Musings, hello. Welcome back. We've got uh, Erika Ayala in the house, literally in this house, in the other room, uh, showing some love and support with uh, helping out with the live chat. You already know, you guys are well behaved. But remember, if somebody comes in here with a different opinion than yours or is misled in some way, please be kind. Show them La Familia love. Be kind, you know. Remind them what we're here for. Um, you know, show them show them our, our love. We got Patty Chapman in the house. We have Jennifer, 1976, in the house. Lady Marie, welcome back. Hello, welcome. Matthew Newman, welcome back. Watch once on Angel. Uh, I, I always mispronounce your name. Please forgive me. Um, so, Andonian, I'm going to call you. Senorita Andonian, forgive, forgive me. I'm, I'm English is my second language. <laughs> I'm going to use that as an excuse. Didi in the house. Welcome. Jackie in the house. Welcome. I know it's really late for you, so thank you for being here with us. Uh, Janice, if you're if, if it's past midnight for you, thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you. Or if it's close to midnight, also, thank you for being here. If it's daytime, welcome. for Thank you for being here. Thank everybody for being here. There we go. Renee Lane in the house. Truth Seeker in the house. We've got Matt McLaren in the house. Welcome. 2B16P sounds like a robot in in uh in Star Wars or something. <laughs> uh Sherry Ann in the house. Excellent. Beautiful, beautiful people in the house. K Kathy Hutch Hutchins. We've got Esther in the house. Henry Cardenas in the house. We got X-Wing in the house. <laughs> oh man, I'm so excited. Greetings from Canada. Greetings from Southern California. We're so happy to have you here. So happy to, to have you in La Familia. Ms. Norris, thank you so much for being here again. Rich in the house. Hi. Excellent. All right. Familia, I'm excited about today's episode. Um, I hope you are excited as well. We are going to make the screen bigger. As soon as you hear that sound, just give me a thumbs up to let me know that you can hear the sound from the from Angel Studios, from the Angel Studios app. Okay. Can you all hear that? Thank you. 
Excellent. Glad you can hear. Okay, here we go. We're going right into it. Our Lord Most High's anointed, King David and his queen. Rise, rise, please. Jonathan, Asa, how is the peace coming along? Uh, I think we're close, Your Majesty. I'll hear a work in progress any day. A work in progress is better than no work at all. <laughs> no progress. I'm looking forward to it as well. But if I may, where are the harps, lyres, and flutes? That's, well, we were trying something new. <laughs> Go on. This is a psalm of Asaph. He wrote the lyrics, I composed the music. And instead of singing and using instruments, the text will be spoken, accompanied by a low hum from the choir. The human voice, the most beautiful instrument of all. Shout out to Humphrey. Wonderful idea. Thank you, sire. My prayer for this psalm is that, like your own songs, it could be a comfort to God's people for generations to come. This is my prayer also. May it please the king. And the king. Him most of all. <laughs> I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. Hmm. In the night, my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. When I remember God, I moan. When I meditate, my spirit faints. You hold my eyelids open. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old. It's beautiful. The years long ago. I said, let me remember my song in the night. Let me meditate in my heart. I will appeal to this, to the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. Oh, okay, that was beautiful. Familia, you already know what to do, right? For those, those of you who have not been here in previous episodes, just watch what everybody else does and join in. There we go. Gary, you got it. Give us your dancing and your fish emojis here. Show us that you're in. While I give you my, my fanciest moves here. And we got somebody else in the house. Oh, let me see. Sorry, let me. Haha! Look at that! <laughs> He's growing. We are 33 weeks and three days today. 33 weeks and three days today, familia. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you all for joining us in this in this dance and not leaving me to dance by myself. <laughs> Let's go. People of the chosen. If your own followers can't figure out how best to share or live your teachings, then why should anyone else? Sit down. That's your answer. I don't mean you, I mean my students. Sit with me. Now? Yes, please. <laughs> Hello, Simon. It's interesting because sitting down is not a, Rabbi, a threat. We didn't come here to cause trouble. A threatening. It would appear that trouble has found us. So then we should address it. And how do you propose to do that, Big James? Listen to them. My friends, sit with me. We cannot go any further until we agree on something. Oh, 
Hmm? Please. We cannot go any further until we agree on something. Message! I'm a rabbi, and as these Jewish brothers will tell you, we like to teach by asking questions. We Ooh. all like to solve problems by talking. Begins with a disagreement, even better. So, feel free to listen, and if you'd like to argue a bit, that's fine too. Rabbi, we look weak and defenseless. Exactly. On the way to Jairus's house in Capernaum, what happened when the woman Veronica touched me? Power went out from you. No, I mean, what happened to her? <laughs> she was healed. How? By touching the fringe of your garment. No. My friends, you forget so quickly. <laughs> you are dear to me. Come on. But your memories are short. You said, daughter, go in peace. Your faith has made you well. Your what? Faith. faith. Her faith. Many of you are afraid right now. Instead of choosing to have faith in me. But, Rabbi, you must see what's happening all around us. Of course he does. That's the point. Rabbi, increase our faith. Judas, if you had faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, you could say to a mulberry tree, be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it would obey you. Can a mulberry tree go in the sea? He's making a point. Truly, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you could say to a mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. How? Oh. How do we get there? Like Judas said, you increase our faith. It's not about size, Philip. Mm. It's about who your faith is in. Oh. If your faith is secure in God, trusting his promises, choosing his will for your life instead of your own, mm. this sized faith is enough. These people we are ministering to, they are like bees hovering among the flowers, waiting for them to open up so they can sip the nectar and spread it to others. <laughs> but they must see a faith in you that is secure, big or small. Looks like you have your work cut out for you. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. You're right, teacher. Wow. We do have short memories. Excuse me. Well, what are you doing? Step back. We're listening to our teacher. So am I. Ignore him, son. <laughs> this moment is about us and Jesus. What is that smell? Rancid. Oh. It is an infection, okay? My leg is broken and it got infected. Mind your own business. You need to get that checked out. It's really bad. Oh, boy. All right. Unclean! Silence. Look, I didn't ask to get a broken leg. And we didn't ask for him to come into this region and make things worse. I'll talk to you in a moment. I'm here to test what he said Ooh. about the faith of the bleeding woman. I already know, brother. I know you. I like that you can hear the wind right in that moment. <laughs> Under normal circumstances, I would strictly charge you to tell no one in some regions and with some people. It's just not my time to be revealed and to escalate tension too soon. But it looks like we're past that. It's been a long time since I've read. <laughs> He's like, well. Thank you. 
Thank you. Imagine Thank he you. would have broken the other leg. <laughs> oh, they believed it. Okay. Glad you came, Simon. It's going to be a long day. That was interesting. So right, oh, right oh from my, the oh. right from the beginning of that, I pointed out that like he instructed them to sit down, and sitting down is like you're at your most vulnerable. This is why people kneel in front of a king because it's it's a vulnerable position to be. You can't you can't attack someone from a kneeling position, so they have you kneel, right? Or that's what they used to do is have you kneel. He had them all sit down, and one of them I forgot who mentioned, but you know we look vulnerable and weak. Yeah, that's kind of the point. He wanted to disarm them and not make them feel threatened by him by sitting down. And in fact, they were looking down on him, right? But then very quickly, he brought them down to 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 their level. It's beautiful, beautiful work. My body language. Shalom. It's good to see you. <laughs> what a surprise. Is everything all right? Good to hear. Have a word inside. Of course. What can I get you to drink? Please, Eden. We're fine. Let's sit down. Something wrong? Can you tell us? Seb. This morning, I ran into Simon at Matthew's old house. He was in a bad way. Oh, well, that's his way. He's all mine. I've known him since he was born. This wasn't Simon being Simon. Eden, we love you like the daughter we never had. Ever since the day you married Simon, a lot has changed in all our lives these past two years, especially yours. And I sense, we, we sense, that some part of Simon's distractedness has something to do with your marriage. We're not saying it is. We just want you to know that you can talk to us. Can you imagine how she feels? You, no matter what's happening. Lord knows we are not perfect, but we have been married for a long time. <laughs> if there's anything we can do to help. What do you think she's feeling in this moment, Eden? I myself am none too pleased with Simon at the moment. But I know he's a good man. I fished with his father, Jonah, for 20 years and never really knew the man. He was so difficult and distant. But Simon has tried to be better than that. And now he's learning a completely different way of living that would be bewildering for any person, let alone Simon. It's not just him. I mean, it's both of us. Mm. But if I'm honest, it started. It started when I'm... Oh, man. Are you hurt? No, it's... Zeb, give us a moment alone. Uh, that intuition, Gosh. I tell you, body, reading, body, reading the body language, reading her hesitation... Men are a little slower, but eventually maybe he'll figure it out. Like, ah, okay. I understand what's going on now.
girl who doesn't know how to be here for me now that he is here. Here, how can we help? I don't know. And neither does Simon, which is our problem. I'm sorry. Eden, I haven't known you for very long, and I don't know anything about marriage. Actually, not that I think about it. I probably shouldn't. No, please. You may not be married. You have suffered. You have lost. Family. Oh, beautiful. Listen to that. Listen to that. She said, first of all, Mary is sitting there feeling like she has no place to say anything because, well, she's not married. But listen to what, what's uh, uh, Zeb's wife's name? I'm sorry. Again, I'm really sorry. I'm, I'm bad with names. Um, she said, no, no, no. You're, you, you're not, you may not have been married, but you suffered. And this is not about, uh, Simone, thank you. This is not about the marriage. This conversation is about, is it Sal Salome or Simone? Sal Salome. <clears throat> this, this conversation isn't about marriage. It's about suffering. And so maybe she does have something important to say because, well, I think out of the three, Mary has probably suffered the most. I think it's safe to say, right? So that that, that was that was something else. I love I, I I love the show more and more every single time we watch. Problem. I'm sorry, Eden. I haven't known you for very long, and I don't know anything about marriage. Actually, not that I think about it, I probably shouldn't. No, please. You may not be married. You have suffered. You have lost family. Still, I am due to all of this. So just know Suffering and loss. You say you have completed your ritual purification requirements. Not in the mikveh, because of the broken cistern. But in the sea, yes. And I, I isolated for seven days, which wasn't hard since Simon was gone. And being cleansed didn't help at all? No. It made it worse because it didn't bring my baby back. Oh, and it didn't help with my marriage. That, that, that woman, Veronica, who Jesus healed, when she cleansed in the sea, she had so much joy. She had just been healed of her malady. Her anguish was over. And you were only at the beginning of your grief, child. Ar. Mm. Have you talked to a rabbi? The one I want to talk to is not here, and neither is my husband. I don't know what it's like to go through what you have, but I have been through enough to know that you need to grieve. Trying to stop the grieving process is so hard, <laughs> right? Because you're only prolonging the grief. Jesus gave her healing and joy. But he hasn't given that to me. Oh, boy. At least her husband and so her, uh, she agree on something. It's not about the rabbi there. It's the words from God that he can give us. That's what Jesus gave me. Oh, wow. It is important to allow yourself that. It's like we mentioned last time. It's about accepting that something happened and then wow. letting that flush what out. Is your name? Fatia. She is Nabatian. I didn't ask her ethnicity. <laughs> Fatia. <laughs> wow. We all understand what exactly has happened in this region. Your students preach the Nave about a kingdom that entranced many from this region visiting the city, including the Augur of Avila who stopped performing his ceremonial and civic duties upon returning to the capitalist. Work came to a standstill. Construction was halted. Merchants could not get permits, and wells went undug. So you're telling me that the region was paralyzed by the absence of one man? What Fatia did not say is that the merchants who could not get permits hijacked a caravan of exports from my Syrophoenician brothers. We had a deal in place that you reneged. What is your name? Eremis. I'm a bronze caster. You appear to be in good health and strength. You're well-dressed in Athenian blue. Athenian blue? Eyes. 
Tell me, Hermes, what is your plight? I bought a plot of land in the north. I needed a reading of the auspices to determine the gods' favorability regarding construction of a new casting facility. Hmm. Sounds so simple. But because of what those Jews said... Do not I associate was... these people with our order. You stood by it as reports of their teaching poisoned the mind. You don't know what we have and haven't done, Fatya. Wow. We strenuously disavow all of their teachings. We have been punished for crimes we did not commit. Andrew, Philip, yes, Rabbi, sir. did you direct your teaching to Jewish citizens? Yes. As you instructed. But the Aga from Abila overheard and was moved. Hmm. Aramis, what would the Augur's reading have told you? Whether they were good or bad omens. Doesn't that sound absurd? You would call us absurd? Jew? Your laws about food and purity are laughable. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. Sit down, brothers. The last thing these people need is thunder. Yeah, easy. I was going to say, easy thunder. <laughs> Listen to this conversation. How can I build a business without knowing where the gods want me to build? Hmm? Nazarene, if you are any sort of self-respecting rabbi, you will not dignify that question with an answer. Your people's condescension is unending. Oh, and there's never been a note of condescension in your voice, Fatia? Let's stay on topic. <laughs> so here we have Eremis, paralyzed by fear that his business ambitions might not be sanctioned by the gods of his religion. How could this lead to violence? The ogre's flagrant rebellion undermined Greek authority. And yet the Jewish community was targeted in a brutal wave of attacks. My people were hardest hit for not having paperwork with Rome. And you turned to crime! Out of desperation! That is why I brought Andrew and Philip back to clarify their message. They told the story about hospitality. But for some reason, Jews and Arabs came to blows over it. The people originally invited to the banquet in your story had perfectly legitimate reasons for not coming. Which is another way of saying some people think the old way of doing things is better. Mm. Look to the ancient roads where the good way is and walk in it. You know your prophets? Of course I do. What about Isaiah? Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Do not pit prophets against each other, especially on this issue. The people on the highways and hedges. Surely you're not referring to the Gentiles. You sound like you don't want us to come to the banquet. The meaning of the story is mm. that God See? wants his house full. And everyone who believes in me is invited. Plain and simple. Heresy! You know, you sound just like the people at the beginning of the story who declined to come to the banquet. I wouldn't be caught dead at a banquet with you. I couldn't stand before God if I was. Now do you see? So you're telling me that prior to Andrew and Philip's visit, the Decapolis was a veritable paradise of peace and unity? At least groups <laughs> kept to themselves. Stop. Our town of Abila has been on edge for decades. Ah, we always knew the Jews were fractious and divided, but quietly, inside their synagogue. At least we go to Jerusalem to make our sacrifices. Not like you Greeks who leave your offerings on public altars to rot and stink. Ever wonder why Zeus never seems to come down to eat of your offerings? Maybe it's because the wine is sour and spoiled. Maybe it's because there is no Zeus. The Augur's apprentice secretly removes the votive offerings under cover of a night when the stench is unbearable. So basically your religion is a sham. <laughs> Again, that contemptuous spirit. Are you proud to belong to this denigrating race? Aramis, please. Now we made it about race. Jesus. Ooh. Your fame is well known. We've heard how you work wonders and change lives and preached a sermon on the Chorazin Plateau that some are saying may become the most significant speech the world has ever known. I wasn't doing it to become famous. Well, too bad, because you are. And specifically for succeeding at all you put your hand to. Looks like you've arrived at your first failure. Jesus of Nazareth. If you are who you say you are, why do you inspire and transform some people, but threaten and disgust others? Let me tell you a story. Oh. <laughs> I know, I know. Wait, 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 wait. I love this. I absolutely, before he gets to this story, because I love stories, and I think that Jesus is probably one of the greatest storytellers 
ever because he doesn't just give you a story. He he gives you something that's going to teach you something, something you can extract that is going to serve you, right? But I want to point something out here. You see how they're all like this man just told, spoke about his beliefs, the one with the Athenian blue. He spoke about his beliefs, right? You don't have to believe in that, right? Jesus doesn't have to believe in that. But notice that the first thing that the Jewish community did, okay, and I'm only dividing, I'm only separating lines because that's how it's that's how it's illustrated here. The Jewish uh, gentleman immediately jumped to ridicule him, f- further dividing him, right? Instead of doing what Gaius and Simon have been doing, right? Instead of doing what Gaius and Matthew were doing, right? Um, there's this this division, but but look look to Jesus, look to what Jesus said. What did he do? Did he say ah ba 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 ba? Let me stop you there. There's only one true God, and that's my dad, and that's it. Or I am that, it, and that's it. No, he's listening. He's actively listening to what people are believing before he. Look, I don't even know. I'm an amateur in the Bible, so maybe I'm just. I'm gonna. I'm make, maybe I sound like a fool, because I don't know how much of this is actually in Scripture and how much is the 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 uh, chosen team adding adding another story or another layer to this to kind of give us a a glimpse as to into what Jesus would be like or how he would have responded, right? Because he did flip tables. We know that, but. I think it's important. I think Jesus, honestly, this is the Jesus that I I follow. This is the Jesus that I follow. Because at no point have I ever come across another human being who was pointing their finger at me and I was compelled by Jesus to, to point my finger back or to push him back or to, you know, to 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 behave in a, to behave un unchrist like, to just to put it that way. Right. But everyone is like, they're all in their little groups. This is oh yeah, but everybody stuck. Everybody, there was peace, right? But only because every group kept to themselves. But that's not what Jesus wants. Right. That's not what our father wants. Our father wants us all to be in the same house, not to be in the same, not just be in the same house, but, but to be mingling together. Right. And to, to listen to one another, to live in harmony, not, live harmoniously separated not one person in this wall and the other group of people on that other wall and then other the dancers are in the middle and some people are like inviting some of the other ones and they're like no we don't dance anyway i'm going too far into into this but i love this i love this if i if i had it my way the chosen would probably be just these scenes I would follow probably just following Jesus the entire time. Forget what's happening over there with Eden. I'm not, wait, n- never mind. That sounded very insensitive. I'm saying I would, I would follow just to be, hear him speak, hear him like interact with other people. Sorry, that sounded really insensitive. <laughs> I didn't mean it that way. Um, but you know what I mean, right? Like I would just, I would just want to be, like, just listen. I wouldn't even want to ask him any questions. Maybe I wouldn't want to bother him. I just want to see how he interacts with other people. I want to see how he, uh, um, how he deescalates hard situations. If he told me to sit, I'm all right. I'm sitting. Why? I trust him fully with my safety, like completely. And if something were to happen, I'll say, hey, I'll see you on the other side, right? If if someone were to threaten me. But this is this is beautiful. This is beautiful work. All right. Now let's get to the story. I love this. I love stories. Let's do this. <laughs> but before, let's get this is a reaction channel. And we're going to go back and catch their reactions to let me tell you a story. Looks like you arrived at your first failure. Jesus of Nazareth. If you are who you say you are. If you are who you say you are. Why do you inspire and transform some people, but threaten and disgust others? Why do you transform some and threaten and disgust others? I know that some of you have already seen this, but how would you answer that? How would you answer that? Why does why does Jesus... See, I think the question is, why do you appear to do that, right? I think that's the question, right? But we're, we're, we're weird in, in the way that we... we 
talk about things as though they were fact. The fact is you transform some and you threaten others. That's a fact. But the real question is, why, why does it appear to be this way? Because an all-loving God wouldn't do that. I mean, I'm only human, and my, my understanding is limited, but I think it's, it's a fair assumption to, to, to make. Right? Anyway, let's go. Let me tell you a story. <laughs> I know, I know. Get comfortable. But this is another thing we Jews do. And come to think of it, so do the Greeks. So everyone just listen up. A sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path. Can't hear you. I love this. Ah, more oh, listening. <laughs> I'm going to move back so we can welcome as many as possible. Students, please spread out and organize the people and help pass my words on to those far away. You want to send us out into Go on? <laughs> we can trust him, John. There you go. Z, Big James, stand here for protection. See, the people are like like soil, wanting to have a seed planted. Please tell me we're gonna hear it. We're gonna hear it, right? They're not gonna leave us hanging like the Sermon on the Mount. Wow, look at that. We've come from Perea. The Decapolis. That explains it. Explains what? Pear tassels. You aren't wearing any. Yes, they are not in style in the Hellenist cities. What brings you to Judea? An important errand in Jerusalem. You might consider stopping in Jericho on your way to pick up some tassels. But you aren't wearing any in the Holy City. Thank you, but I have weightier matters on the mind than fashion. <laughs> you got to hurry. There is a storm coming. <laughs> there certainly is. <laughs> I don't think they were talking about the same storm. <laughs> what do you think? This man, Leander, asked, how can it be that I inspire and transform some people but seem to threaten and repulse others. And so, as I said, I'd like to respond with a story. A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much Immediately soil. Immediately, they sprang up for there was no depth of soil. And immediately they sprang up, for there was no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no root, they withered away. And since they had no root, they withered away. And the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. And the thorns grew up and choked them. There we go. Other seeds fell on good soil. And produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. You seeing this? Simon, this crowd, we are completely surrounded. There must be thousands. Poor Simon, he's in a, he's in a daze. Beautiful things. See, what, what, what some people aren't realizing here is that in that group of people, those people are the different types of soil that he's talking about. They're the different types of soil he's talking about. To some, some people, Jesus' words will land and then the sun will dry out There's that seed that was planted 
And since it got no root, it's going to die. Right? Others, it might grow a tiny little bit. The birds, the birds, the birds of the mind come sweeping sweeping in and kill that plant or eat this, whatever the whatever the, the parable is. These people on here are, are the soil, the very soil he's talking about. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to briefly, before we continue, I want to please, please, please zero one first. If you could please do me a favor and please let's not talk about that. Okay. Let's not talk about that. I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to talk about, I don't want to have that discussion on the live chat. I respect your opinion, whatever, you, whatever it is that you believe, but this is, this is not the place, please. This is not the place. No, um, I, I was going to say something, but I'm not going to. Um, but please, can we just not not have that? I really, I really appreciate you being here. You can watch the show. We're watching the show, but please don't 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 talk about that, okay? With uh, with all due respect, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to shut it down. I'm not trying to 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 tell you what to do, what you can say or not cannot say. But just for for the sake of this live chat, if we can just please leave that topic for another for another for another time. If you care, you can you can leave a comment. You can leave talk about it in the comment section. And if it, and if anybody else wants to have the conversation, you can have the conversation in the comment section. But for the sake of the live chat, because we are watching something that is um, about about the life of Christ, I just really just want to focus on that. If we may, please. Thank you so much. You're still welcome to stay, by the way. Please and please stay. I would I would I would love it if you stayed. I just want to keep the live chat in conversation with what's happening on the on the on on the show itself. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right, here we go. So that that that's all I wanted to say is that the people don't really know that they are that that there are those the soil and that many of them won't pick up on God's word or God's spirit or the seed that God plants, and some will, and the ones that do are are few. Unfortunately. So here we go. Oh, what in heaven? I'm coming. I'm sorry to disturb you, Rabbi, but it's urgent. So uh, I'm sorry, never mind. I was going to ask Rabbi this Shmuel, is. it is a great honor. Forgive the late hour. My name is Nashon, son Nashon. of Eliab of Abila. Okay. You've ridden a great distance. Did your tassels fall off along the way? Oh, my goodness. Yes, uh, they must have. My apologies. Get him a spare. Please. I heard the great Shammai has issued an edict regarding false prophecy. To be on guard and alert for anything amiss. Yes. I have just encountered... What is that vest? Oh, this was a gift from my wife. Damask. So named for Damascus, where it is made. A silk tailor in the Hellenist cities. Remove it at once. Excuse me? Take it off. I... According to the law of Moses, you shall not wear a garment of cloth made of two kinds of material. Oh, I, I thought that was just an old... An old what? Finish that sentence. Oh, that guy's I serious. don't know. A thing about not imitating Canaanite culture, a cultural prohibition for its time. I didn't think anyone Torah actually... Torah is timeless. I understand. Again, my apologies. I did not intend to sin. It is as I expected in the Decapolis. Greek influence has polluted your faith. But apparently <sighs> not so much that you did not heed Judge Shemai's edict. I encountered a Jewish rabbi consorting with Gentiles. Multitudes. He even healed a Gentile deaf mute. Tell me about the preacher. Um, three weeks ago, a pair of students from Capernaum were teaching in the Bay to a group they didn't realize was both Jew and Gentile, repeating the teachings of their rabbi, whose name they said was Jesus. Of? What do you mean? Jesus from where? A small <laughs> town called Nazareth, if you can believe. I require no further information from you. But so rabbi, in the temple guard, retrieve Rabbi Yanni. I'll gather Shemai's representatives. Meet us at the Herodian staircase. Oh, goodness. Okay. It's about to... 
It's about to get real here. Ooh. Remember, mind you, Familia, even, even you, the 171 people heads. who are on here are also that Seems soil. Like, so. Thank God. Macedonian bridal leather? Syro Phoenician hammer finished steel shoes. Whoa. And you left her untethered, untended. I was in such a hurry. Here, for your pains, I am terribly grateful. No, it's all right. My pleasure, really. But tell me, what could be so important that you would leave such a rare beauty vulnerable to theft or uh, wandering off? I had important business with Rabbi Shmuel. Rabbi Shmuel? I am fascinated to know more. You must be very important yourself. Mm. What I'm about to say is for Jews as much as Gentiles. Mm. So many cities are missing the need for repentance and righteousness. I've already preached and done miracles in multiple cities, as have my followers. In multiple cities. And yet they still fall short. So many of you are here listening to me, eager to be drawn closer to God, eager to find peace in your souls. And in doing so, you have more wisdom than most of the religious leaders who refuse to be humble. <laughs> I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. And no one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son. And anyone for whom the Son chooses to reveal him I am revealing the Father to you now, Jew and Gentile. What is stirring in your hearts in the middle of such division and unrest is Father God being revealed to you. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Speaking of rest, we all need it now, including me. So wherever you want to lay your head, let's sleep, and I will continue in the morning. Shalom, shalom. Thank you. Please let Jesus rest. We'll be back in the morning. Every time I hear that, I every time I I I hear those words, because I've heard them multiple times, I become I become empty. I'm emptied out. Yeah, kind of kind of like a. Like if I were a cup of, of dirty water and just suddenly clean water pours and pours and pours and pours until eventually all that gunk is out and it just keeps pouring and then suddenly it's just clean water, just clear water. And then suddenly it stops. 
I'm like, I'm empty, dude. Like, do you know what I mean? But that he's pointing to something. He's pointing to someone. He's pointing to someone. And maybe, I don't know. I don't know, man. Things happen in the way that they happened with the with with what happened uh, earlier in the live chat here. Maybe they, they, maybe these things happen for a reason because there's a strong message embedded in this familia. Jesus points to one person. Jesus points not not to himself. He only points to himself with regards to his mission. But he points to one person and one person only where our eyes should all turn to. He said, look at me. And if you believe in me, then you believe in him. And he's pointing. He's pointing. And I'm, I, I, again, I'm, not, I'm an amateur when it comes to the Bible, but I know for a fact that even he himself says, it's not about me. It's not, it's not about me. It's about him. I'm here for him. I know him. No one knows him. No one in this world knows him. I know him. And he gave me everything that belonged to him. You. He gave me you. And anyone who chooses to believe that I am who he says, who that I that anyone who believes that I am who I say I am will know the Father, will know him. Then Jesus pray for all of us to have eternal life and he says an eternal life is to know you eternal life means to know you he's pointing to him no religious leader no political leader if if any of them is pointing to anything other than jesus who points to god be careful with that be very careful with that be ve- extremely careful with that when you see when you see someone on TV say, oh, um, I follow him, the big guy, and then does this with their body language, he's doing something. He's saying something with the body language. He's saying, that guy, I want you to see that guy in me or me as that guy. You got to be very careful with, with body language and what people are saying when a pastor or preacher is saying that they were sent by God to do X, Y, Z, A, B, C. I, I'm very careful when I tell people that God told me this, because I'm never going to say God told me this message for you. God speaks to people. And yes, he, I believe that he can speak through people, but you got to be very careful when someone says that they have a message for you specifically from God. What you should do is go home and pray about that is pray about that. Let those words that that person sent you and let, let God speak in you. Sometimes sometimes God is trying to reach you and we're so distracted by th- the things of this world that we're likely to believe someone else's message from God to us than we are to, than we are to believe it ourselves. So you like some, if somebody does ever tell, if some, I'm going to tell you what, I don't, I don't want to tell you what to do, but I'm going to tell you what I would do. If somebody stopped me in my tracks and said, hey, God has a message for me and it shook me because the message really felt real, I'm going to be careful of two things. One, I'm going to be careful not to, to take this person as, a, as, as God or something sacred. I'm not going to take the message wholeheartedly, but what I am going to do is I'm going to go home and, and pray about that and say, hey, I'm sorry that I've been super distracted or I've been distracted by my own thinking, by my own emotions, or I've been, I've been trying to force my will on this, but you're, it's about you. It's about your will. It's about what you want this life to be. And I'm here and I'm, and I'm, and I'm open and I'm having this conversation with you. Is this message truly from you? And pray on that. I could truly pray on that. Be, please be very careful with people who say that they are sent from God or that they are God, or that publicly will will make a show out of it. Especially people who aren't, who who have not been in the church until they got cameras on them. Be very careful with that. Anyways, I love this 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 sermon. I love that little tiny that prayer that he did it was fantastic. I love it. I sound like Nacho Libre. Fantastic. I love it. 
Here we go. Oh, I knew that was going to happen. Oh, <laughs> look at Matthew's face. It was just gonna... Do you have the count? Yes. There's at least 1,000 to the south. There were still people arriving after the sun went down. Are Andrew and Philip back? No, but before it got dark, both points of the compass looked roughly equal in population. So 2,000? And counting. I said roughly, but yes. We should get going. We have a situation. What situation? The Gentiles. They're out of food. I don't think anyone expected the teaching to last all day. Well, no one has forced them to stay. Simon, they're hungry for his words. Yeah, now they're hungry for food. It's not our problem. Oh. They go back to their villages. They were driven out by violence. It's nighttime. They, they have to sleep in these fields. He doesn't get it. He doesn't get how bad things were when we first came. Whatever happened, it wouldn't change the facts of the situation. Well... I can see things are going just as well here as out there. What do you mean? Some of these people were driven from their home more than a week ago. Wow. They're hungry and tired. Don't trouble Simon with your news. His mind is anywhere but here. Andrew, be gracious with your brother. Gracious? He just said the people's hunger is not our problem and, and we should send them away? Did you really say that, Simon? It doesn't matter now. What matters is that we need to solve this without Simon's help. We can't. He's not the Messiah, John. Jesus is. No <laughs> arguments there, but... He Jesus said, told me that, cannot. that the success of this trip depends on Simon. Oh, that's he right. That? He did say that. That's why I stayed behind. Jesus insisted that I stay back, wait for Simon, and bring him. Simon. Did he say how? No. If it all depends on you, what's the plan? Nothing. What? Jesus is capable of doing whatever he wants. In the end, that's what he'll do. Brother, you're Peter. Jesus wants to provide a solution for these hungry people. That's what's going to happen. I'm sure of it. You don't seem very happy to be sure of it. Because <laughs> he's not. He's hurting. He says, I'm fine. Yo, yeah, I'm fine. But he's not. <laughs> he's broken. Right, Matt? <laughs> Azam, wake up. They're slobbering on me. Oh. How much farther do we have to go? You know the distance to the Decapolis, and you know the hour we left. An ungodly one. There's no such thing as an ungodly hour. <laughs> Tell that to my wife. We were supposed to take the children to see their grandparents in Gaza today. You serve God first, then our family. We serve God by serving our families. And you don't have one. So don't preach at me. <laughs> the only preaching I've heard lately is you repeating Shammai's refrain that fidelity to God's law to the letter is the only thing that matters. And yet here you are complaining, complaining. about actually having to act upon that conviction. Wow. When I filed the report to Shammai about the healings on Shammai. That, sorry, that reminds me of, uh, some of you probably won't understand this, but that reminds me of that meme where Spider-Mans are pointing at each other. <laughs> Like everybody's just pointing at one another. What in the what, man? It's just like, we're like, bah! and then another smack. It's like a, <laughs> never mind. All right, let's go. <laughs> and Jesus commanding his followers to eat heads of grain on Shabbat. Your very own Shammai said to me that we would wait to take action until we knew it was God's time. Ugh. Wisdom, I wish you would have heeded. You forget your rank and stature. Oh, to the contrary. Cognizant of my rank and stature, I asked him how we would know it was God's time. His answer? When evidence was abundant. Nashon said the crowds passing him on the road could only be described as multitudes of Gentiles. That's the other thing about all this. Gentiles? Why are we meddling in the Decapolis? It's the holy city that matters. So, a sin. It's only a sin if it happens in or near Jerusalem. No, no, no. It's a matter of allocating resources. There's more syncretism 
and Hellenist influences desecrating our people's practice in the Decapolis than we could ever hope to address in any meaningful way. The hassle of hunting down a single Jew who may be leading some people astray is myopic. And I, oh, unappealing. I'm sorry that false teaching is such a burden to you. <laughs> such a burden to you. That's enough of Wow, masters of sarcasm. I think the one thing that we can all agree on is that if we find him performing any magic tricks or sorcery, we will have to take action. It's been a long time since I've prosecuted the witchcraft case. They can be unwieldy, which is why I let them come to me. Good Don't thing they're not biased or anything. Is there any way really... to go faster? Figure out how. Yes, you summoned the carriage in the middle of the seen. night. Did you expect Caiaphas to handpick your steeds? Ah, oh, just relax. Uh oh. There's Tell a, me what you think of this. A falcon chasing. A man had two sons, and he went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. And he answered, I will not. But afterward, he changed his mind and he went. And he went to the other son and said the same. And he answered, I will go, sir, but did not go. Which of the two sons did the will of the father? The first. Many of you are from cities such as Tyre and Sidon, cities that have rejected God. You were. Where did you find that? At the bottom of my bag. <laughs> I forgot it was in there. It's a little stale, but it'll do. You've been out here for days, and, and you just you just discovered it. I've, I followed some men who told me we were coming to watch a fight. A fight? Everyone was just in <laughs> such a hurry. Does anyone have any food? Is no food? Your name is Andrew. Yes? Yes. I wanted to say thank you again for everything. I'm not the one here, your father, but I can certainly pass that along. You've been asking about food. Yes. I want to share what I have. Sonnies can feed one family of thousands. I just wanted to do what I could. Uh, the kingdom of heaven message is like a treasure hidden in a field which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. What do you mean by that? No. <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> say it another way. We should it's like a merchant in search of fine wow. pearl, of no way to feed these one people. pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Listen carefully, because this is accessible to all of you, regardless of race or creed. Hmm. It's the last thing we need. The to kingdom do. is so saying. valuable that once you have glimpsed it, it's worth parting with everything you have in order to gain it. We shouldn't burden you. Even though to others you might look like a fool, throwing away your life savings to buy what would look to others an unremarkable field. But you know of the hidden treasure. That makes it worth everything. Oh, boy. Have you come closer to here, better? No, that's <laughs> the issue. <laughs> He said, have you come closer to hear better? My friends, if you'll excuse me, I must speak with my students a moment. <laughs> They're impatient in the crowd. Food. Some have been without food for days, others have traveled a great distance. So, give them something to eat. We're out of food. They're out of food. Time to send them home. But well, at this point, they're so hungry and tired that if we send them home, they're faint along the way. <laughs> you knew they were hungry? Yes, Judas. I can see them while I'm talking. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Well, this is a tough one. Where can we buy some bread for all these people? 
And we only came with a little over 200 denarii. Rabbi, that's not even enough to get a little bit for everyone. I wouldn't even know how to calculate that. Matthew and I can calculate that. That's very easy. <laughs> Maybe if we go into the cities, we can oh, negotiate something on credit. Yes. Yes, that could work. Negotiate with whom? The closest city is Abila, and its entire population is here. It's nine miles away, and even if we raided every house in town, we'd have to find a way to bring it back here, and it would still only feed a fraction of the masses. Can you bring me anything? <coughs> Surely there's some food from someone, even a small amount. Five loaves of bread and two fish. But what is this for so many? Barley loaves. Two fish and five barley loaves. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> he did ask a question. John. He will take care of it if he wants to. You look scared. What are you afraid of? I'm afraid that he'll choose them. This is wonderful bread, Telemachus. I know it's not enough. Oh, it's enough for me. I can do a lot with this. Thank you. Listen to wait, 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 wait. Pause, 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 pause. First of all, this kid is kind of coming in at the right time, right? He's coming in right when he's explaining that if you see something va of value, sell sell everything, right? Because you know the treasure, you know what the kingdom is, even though it might be disguised as uh, an unappealing field, right? With nothing like it, there's no crop there's no there are no there are no animals on the field there's no gold right on the field or anything like that so why would somebody sell other things just to to buy that right but that's all they're looking at they're only looking at at the field there's something hidden inside of it right and this kid is saying hey i'm going to give what i have he gave everything because he sees value in what they're doing right and then the kid goes I know that it's not enough, or it may not be a lot. He says, it may not be a lot. And Jesus says, this is, this is enough for me. I can do a lot with this. So isn't that, isn't that Christ-like? Like, isn't that just like Christ where you, you give to him something that you feel is nothing to you, right? This is, this is exactly why I love the only Christmas song that I will listen to probably on repeat all day, every day is the little drummer boy. The little drummer boy. Here's this person who's seen kings, okay? He's seen kings bring gold and and myrrh and frankincense and whatever other things that are that are 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 of value either socially or you know quite literally gold is valuable and well frankincense and myrrh is probably something that you would give to someone in high class right the la high like we say in spanish uh, the pipiri is nice <laughs> um but then you have this little kid who shows up with his drum who's probably beat up drum right he has he says it says in the song i have i, I have nothing to give but he plays his best i played my best for him and that's that's it. That's all he wants is for for you to give him your best. Not just like not just take like the best shoes you have and give them. Not just to take the best suit that you have and give it, or you know the the, the most money that you have, or the best gold or the best. But to give him your best, your best. Some of you are sitting there with talents that you're not using to 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 worship him, to praise him, to to give to be grateful, to give thanks. To him right no instead we complain that we don't have enough that that he didn't give us enough how's god going to give you more if you don't if you're not grateful for what little he has given you and you don't give it back to him and by give it back to him i mean give it to, to the people his people some of you will play in church and some of you just means picking up a guitar going to a party and singing your best for the people and making giving them a small moment to remember like that was nice right he came and or she came and she played her guitar that was that was something else that was something special 
right? You give, you give your best. And then what does Jesus do with that? What does Jesus do with your best? He multiplies that. He, he takes it and he multiplies it, right? That's, that's so, that's so beautiful. Uh, that song makes me cry. There, by the way, I, I'm, I'm, I have a homework for you all. I have this very, this, this version of the little drummer boy that I heard probably about 10 or 12 years ago. It's a male singer and it's the most softest, like not super exaggerated, but it's the most simplest voice ever. But it was my favorite version of that song and I have not found it. So if anybody has links and you want to links to, to different versions and you want to copy them and paste them in the comment section down below, I'd appreciate it. And the one who, who uh, finds it, um, we'll get, we'll get a prize. We'll get a prize. Let's just say that. Let's go. All right, Jesus, show us what you can do. I said, are you Lord, our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. But to find some bread. If they've got bread, be ready. We'll probably be first. Hmm. Feed them. What has changed? Are we organized the people into groups of 50 and 100? Gather up 12 baskets to distribute the loaves and fish. They're all. Was I unclear? Huh? <laughs> it's like, no, you're unrealistic. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's what the part is. familiar. Maybe. Let's go. Yeah, Thomas, he, he knows what's up. See, he trusts. He's like, I've seen this before. Feed them. Yes. The kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that the man took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but when it has grown, it is larger than all the gardens. It becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air can come and make their nests in its branches. There, you think so? There. Why twelve baskets? Like, yeah, yeah. There, there. Yes. Anyone need some? Yeah. Beautiful. It's better than the tail. That's the oh, last of it. Yeah, that's the last of it. <sighs> All right. Marcus, you can have your basket back. <laughs> <laughs> because 12 disciples gotcha. <laughs> Imagine being that kid. You see all this? <laughs> He's trying to do the math. <laughs> oh, I love it. Ah, oh, poor Simon. I kept you here all this time giving you spiritual food. But you clearly need actual food now. <laughs> so let's eat. <laughs> Brother, I was going to say that's so rock and roll. Yeah, and then they bring in the distorted guitar. I'm listening to the music. Uh, <laughs> when 
help you, Trent. Thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate you so much. Oh, switching it up. <laughs> Come on, air jump with me, familia. Oh, no ending. Okay. <laughs> Rabbi Yusuf, that was awesome. There are two women here to see. It's Rabbi Josiah's visiting hours. Is he unable to assist? I'm in the middle of something very important. One of the women says to tell you she is the wife of Simon, son of Jonah. Oh, Jesus is. Yes, please send him in. You have my deepest condolences. Torah has very little to say on this specific matter, I'm afraid. But sorrow is sorrow. Ah. Especially since your husband is... Gone. Perhaps, but I was going to say distracted. There is much going on with Jesus, and in many ways... The world is upending with Simon in the middle of it. Mm. I'm making sense of it myself. Maybe I've been too distracted. It's easy to forget there are still matters of great importance to tend to in the home. Are you angry with him? Yes. I understand. Uh, you mentioned you did your purification in the sea. Now that some time has passed, what about a new cleansing, but in the mikveh? With a prayerful state of mind, maybe this could be part of a new path forward. But the cistern... We received word this morning it will be operational by sundown. Actually, I believe Simon helped in the speedy repair. Perhaps when she is ready. Mm. We were hoping today for a reading from Torah. Of course. Did you have anything in mind? Perhaps something uplifting and joyful, Rabbi? <laughs> I'm not sure that would be truthful. Mm. There are many psalms of anguish and even anger, and they are all just as important as the others. In fact, some of the desperate psalms draw us closest to God. One of David's appointed chief musicians, Asaph, was inclined to write in this depth. As in this passage, in the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand stretches out without wearying. This psalm is desperate, even angry. Do you know who else is undoubtedly desperate and angry? Simon. Oh, she just exhaled. And I'm sure he's actually very angry and making that known to others. Perhaps you can pray this with him and for him. Oh man, that's tough. My soul refuses to be comforted. When I remember God, I moan. When I meditate, my spirit faints. Oh, you Lord. hold my eyelids open. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. Will the Lord spurn forever 
and never again be favorable? Has his steadfast love forever ceased? Are his promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in his anger shut up his compassion? But that's not the whole song, is it? She knows it. Then I said, I will appeal to this, to the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. Your way, O oh God, is holy. What God is great like our God? You are the God that works wonders. You have made your might known among the peoples. You, with your arm, redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. Hey, James, what happened? Your basket looks heavier than before. <laughs> Everyone ate it was satisfied. They didn't want any more. They were full. You gave us even more than we needed. You will get used to this kind of math. <laughs> I'm in. Thank you, Rabbi. Can't believe we have a doubt it. Well, I was the one to cause their hunger. I should be the one to satisfy it, no? Mm. I, I am no longer surprised. You're a new Matthew. Oh, sorry. But I meant it. <laughs> it's always this way. I don't know why I'm surprised. It's, um... Just like Simon said it would be. Mm. He's angry because he didn't mean it that way, but it worked out anyway. <laughs> oh, goodness, man. Come on. John. so difficult it's so challenging see salome insisted that that yusuf um read something joyful and uplifting and yusuf in his wisdom said that would be untrue wouldn't it and she's like yeah sometimes <clears throat> sometimes people don't want to hear sometimes some people don't want to be uplifted Sometimes people want to be left in their in their pain. I recently was breaking down really quickly. Just wanted to share this with you, but I recently broke down a song, and uh, and the song says it's it's a song in Spanish, and it says "Si me ven que estoy llorando." No, it says "Déjenme si estoy llorando," which means like if you see me cry, just leave me be. Ni un consuelo estoy buscando, which, which means I'm not looking for consolation. Quiero estar solo con mi dolor. I want to be alone with my pain. It's about this person who is finding comfort being by himself and, and makes loneliness or makes his pain or his sadness his, his friend for now, his companion. And that's just how some people want to be. Some people want to stay in that pain. Um, well, want to be in that pain for a little bit. They don't want to be pushed out of it right into joy, right? Even though we know that that's what, what, where they should be. They should be, they should be happy. But she can't see where that comes from. She's blaming God for, for it. And I can imagine that, that Simon, when, he's, when, when he was looking at all the people and the miracle that just happened, he, he was so angry, he didn't even, he didn't even, he wasn't even surprised about the miracle. He was probably thinking to himself, oh, God gives them food, but he took my baby. He's giving them what they want, 
what about what I want? Took 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 my child, made my wife unhappy, and is causing tension in my marriage. But we're very quick to blame something outside of ourselves, right? And the miscommunication between between uh, um, Eden and and Simon is obvious, right? They both fail to communicate what they were actually going through. And um, it's just, uh, <clears throat> it's just interesting. And then Simon, well, it's hard to tell with Simon. We know that he's upset and we know, we know that he's going through some stuff and then, and he doesn't know how lucky he is to have people who are actually, uh, who understand that. We may not understand exactly what he's going through, but, they know that he's going through something and they're with him, but he doesn't want anything to do with that. Um, goodness, man, that's such a trip. Um, let's continue. He wasn't exaggerating. This is more than I ever thought. That's a Nabataean girl. That headdress is Arabian. We're in a sea of Gentiles. Driver, stop! We are in a sea of Gentiles, he says. What is this? What has been happening? The teacher from Nazareth. How long have you been out here listening to the teacher? Two days. But we are several miles from any city. How did you eat? He multiplied loaves and fish to feed us, thousands of us. What do you mean, multiply? There just kept being more and more by his hand. A miracle? We need the evidence. Be of careful. <laughs> that won't be difficult. Did he and his followers also partake? Of course. He breaks bread with Gentiles. I tell them God performed a miracle and they say, but he ate with the wrong people. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of that thing that says, some people probably saw Jesus walk on water and they were like, he probably can't even swim. <laughs> He walks on water because he probably can't even swim. <laughs> oh, goodness, man. Goodness, goodness, goodness. Let's go. We already knew an Ethiopian woman travels with him and his students. But breaking bread. That's worse than I thought. Again, we need witnesses. Pharisees from Judea. You're a little late. You missed the show. Name the show. teacher. Jesus of Nazareth. A name I will never forget. What did he preach? Did any of it run contrary to Torah? He preached about the kingdom of heaven. Which is what? Everything. Uh, uh, mustard seed, a pearl of great price, treasure hidden in a field, but the best part. He said that in the kingdom of heaven, many would come from east and west with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's all of us, Jew and Gentile together at one table. What? We need a third witness. He said, what? Jesus of Nazareth may be the first Jew to break bread with Gentiles, but he won't be the last. And it will be with your patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Blasphemy. You've hurt our people. We've hurt each other. But he is healing us. My goodness, man, they're so angry. Wow. We need three witnesses. What did the teacher say about Gentiles reclining at table with patriarchs? What did the teacher say? What did the teacher say about Gentiles reclining at table with patriarchs? What did the teacher say? Okay. Okay, it will do it. Not amazing what it will do. No, 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 no. No net, no fish, nothing. I just want the boat. I want four hours waiting inside when I come back. Listen, okay. how much you want? Because I'm in a rush, it's waiting for you, okay? What do we do now? Wait a minute. It's a 13-mile walk back to Copernium. Wait a minute. The sea in the rain and in the dark. Is that everything we have to do today? Carrying the baskets and distributing food. I'll do my best. We won't leave you behind, James. We're not walking. Is this the story that inspired the song Oceans? We're rowing. 
It's only eight miles across. I got a boat. We can row faster than we can walk. Come on, Big James. You know we're good at this. <laughs> yeah. Excellent strategy, Simon. <laughs> Simon is right. Everyone get into the boat and row back across to Capernaum. What about you? <sighs> it's been a long three days. Three need days, some time huh? alone to pray. But there are storm clouds on the horizon. Let me stay with you, Rabbi. I'll keep watch. Be fine. All of you go. Hurry. Follow Simon. You all did so well today. Shalom, shalom. Shalom, 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 shalom. shalom. I stayed behind so you could get us a boat. I won't be in your way for long. Have faith, Simon. Faith isn't my problem. I think I was a mistake. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Even God makes them, right? Bro, come on, man. Go. You heard him. Let's go. Everybody's saying grab some tissues, but I have a shirt. <laughs> How many of us haven't felt this before? Like you're not good enough at, at any degree or like God made a mistake with you. Come on, man. Do me a favor, please. <laughs> Get out of here, man. <laughs> Get out of here. Shmuel, come on, man. <laughs> You look familiar. <laughs> I Jesus more specifically <laughs> and I mean no offense. You look troubled. I am. Mm. I'm going up this hill to pray. Would you care to join me? You don't have to talk about anything if you don't want. I know sometimes people who are troubled just Need someone to sit with them in silence. Oh boy. Like Job. Mm. Is it that bad? Not quite. More like David. Ah. Boucher. How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Oh, oh, man. You're losing something. I know what that's like. What are you losing? Time. Come. Join me in prayer for a little while. Will you speak with me after? I will. If you still want to question me after we pray. Yeah, it's it's going to be some prayer then, huh? If It might even not want him to uh, question him. Keep 
Anybody can see that? Over there! I don't see anything! What are we looking for? I... Go! Go! It's a oh. <laughs> Yeah, the mind starts to set. Lord, send me. I'm sinking. We shall move the wings till we take refuge. Wow. 
I regret not seeing this in theaters. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like leaning in. Don't let me go. Don't let me go. I got you. I got you. Don't let me go. I got you. Oh, you have little faith. Why did you doubt? Don't let me go. I have much planned for you, Simon, including hard things. Just keep your eyes on me, I promise. Come on, help me, help me. Don't let me go, please. I'm sorry. Don't let me go. Oh, goodness, man. I'm sorry. Please don't. Let me go. Peace. Be still. Here. I'm always here. I let people go hungry, but I feed them. Please, please don't let me go. Don't let me go. Don't let him go. Oh, man. Please. I will appeal to this, to the years of the right hand of the Most High. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, before we get to this part. I... That was... That was something else, man. Um, you, you, you sit in church and you hear the story... And maybe the pastor might try his best to use inflection in his voice to really help you picture it. But there's nothing, there's nothing like a little CGI to put you right into that story and make it so that you feel the power of that story. Familia, God walks on the things that drowns you. God walks on top of the thing that is drowning you. It doesn't matter what it is. Your marriage is failing. Financial problems. Problems at work. The bills stacked up this high. Sickness in your family. few hours of sleep because you have multiple jobs, violence, abuse, drugs, alcohol, anger. Okay, not just external things that drown you, but the things that drown you from within. Anger, resentment, hatred, division, racism. All of the things that drown you, God walks on top of. 
it doesn't drown him. A lot of us have that kind of faith where we follow, but then we quickly are, we quickly turn our eyes away from him to look at how our bills are, are stacking up. And you look this way and then your kid's health is declining. So that is stacking up on you. And you start sinking. And he's saying, look at me. Keep your eyes on me. Reaching his hand. Another thing that he said right there after, he said, Simon was crying to him, don't let me go. And the power of having other people also praying that same prayer that you're praying, don't let me go. To have your partner say, don't let him go. And that that prayer being amplified, which is what I love about this channel, is that we don't just pray for ourselves or for our family. You have a whole family around the world, everywhere around the world, who if you are brave enough to say, familia, I'm going through this and this is a hard time for me, please pray for my husband. Please pray for my child. Please pray for my boss. Please pray for my work. Please pray for my finances. Please pray for this. Pray for that. And you have a global family that will join you in that prayer. Amplify that. that that's important. But what's important is what Jesus said afterwards. He said, I'm here. I'm always here. I am always here. The problem is you're not focused on me. You look right past me because you're seeing the danger, not realizing that I can calm that danger down if, with, with one command. If you trust me, if you have faith in me, I will do what's impossible to you. It's not impossible to me. When you don't see any way that those bills are going to go away, you're not looking at the way, which I am. I'm speaking from Jesus' perspective, okay? Not me, not me specifically, not Leo. Leo's nobody. He's nothing. He's saying, keep your eyes on me, on the thing that feeds you. I, yeah, I allow you to go hungry, but I feed you. I allow the bills to get, to get to stack up, but I pay them. I allow the sickness to take over, but I heal you. I allow uh, discord. Disagreements, anger, violence. But I will give you peace. That's that's what we have. That's what we have. I mean, yeah, we have that. But you're looking at you're looking at the wave. Not realizing that he could say stop right there, and it'll stop. You're looking at the lightning and the thunder and worried that it's going to strike you. And he could say, stop. And it stops. Mm. So many beautiful things to, to take from this episode, right? Everything from the sower to the treasure in the field to, to him going up to the hill to pray and then Simon walking on the water. So many things to pull from that. If you're if you're willing to 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 be present and to 
to receive that message. Some of you are just hearing the message, you reinterpret it in your head and you think you got it and you walk away from the message and then a wave comes and you forget the message. Really like look back on this, look back at this episode and pay close attention to, to, to what Jesus is saying between the lines, between the lines. And what, and what Dallas and his team has very carefully, very meticulously taken the time to, to, to direct and block and, and script so that, that this other message can come through. So that, so that it just not, that doesn't only speak to your conscious mind, but to your subconscious mind that you hear the, the, the words that you see the images and that, that all of it penetrates this ego that penetrates this, this self that believes itself to know everything, but that it penetrates that and it, it sticks to the spirit that it sticks to your being, not just in the mind. They took the time. Please take the time to watch this over again and then just like take the time to watch this again and listen. Like truly listen. Truly listen. Because there's so, so much wisdom in this one episode alone that is going to, to bring peace. It's going to bring peace. We're already starting to see the division, the groups, and say, hey, you have a neighbor you haven't spoken to. I'm not saying go and strike a conversation, but when you see him, just this, just that. See how easy that is? Do, do that with me right now. Ready? One, two, three. That's it. That's all it takes. You're at the store. You see someone? Watch this. That's it. Eyesight with someone, lock eyes with them, and go like this. That's it. That's literally all it takes for one person who might be having a crappy day, excuse the word, to go, huh, somebody recognized me today. Someone saw me today. I felt invisible today because I'm sinking and drowning in debt, drowning in, in, in my, my troubles, my burdens. I feel invisible and someone, some random stranger, just looked at me and acknowledged me and gave me the nod that told me I'm here and I matter and I exist. That's all it takes. You don't know who is considering not being here anymore because they feel unseen and a simple, hey, nice shoes. Or hey, how you doing? A simple smile will make them feel like they belong here and they should stay here. That's it. It's all it takes. Hmm. And and look, some of you need that right now. I'm looking at you right now. I'm telling you, keep your eyes on him. Keep your eyes on him. He's here. He's always here. He sees what you're going through. He knows exactly what you're going through. He's watching you. He's seeing your struggle. He knows your pain. He knows what you need and he's ready to give it to you. Do, do you trust him? Do you trust him? When, when that parable says like sell everything, and give up everything, it's everything inside as well. And that anger, give it up. That resentment, toss it. That pain, that story you tell yourself about why you are the way that you are, that story that you repeat to yourself that tells you you're not good enough, that you're not worthy of love, that you're not worthy of anyone's time, that you shouldn't be here, that you're a mistake. Give that up. I almost, I almost said it more <laughs> decorative. Give it up. It's useless. It's not part of his plan. That's, that's 
outside of the kingdom stuff. There's no place in the kingdom for that. You belong here. You deserve to be here. You're loved. You're seen. You're welcomed. You're accepted. I want to say just the way you are, and you are accepted just the way you are. But walk with him for a little bit. Because even though he does accept you just the way that you are, there are some things that could change, that could make things easier for you. There are some habits that should be let go. Not because you're it doesn't make you a bad person. It just it doesn't it doesn't fit in the kingdom. There's no place for that in the kingdom. Some habits, some decisions, some actions. There's no, there's no place in the kingdom for that. But you are welcome. You are loved. No judgment. But we, but we do want to talk about that, that habit. That habit that doesn't make you shine. You know what it is. I, I don't know what it is. I'm not going to sit here and claim to know what you're going through and claim to know your personal business, but there are some things that you know that you should let go that you don't. Things that are holding you back. You know what they are. You don't need some someone to, to, to shame you for that or, or guilt trip you about that. You know exactly what that is. And you know that it doesn't serve you or serve him. And those are the things that you should sacrifice and sell and give away and throw in the trash. Because there's the treasures there are far more valuable than your than what you think your pride is worth. Let's go. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. Your way, O oh God, is holy. Man, <sighs> what God is great like our God. You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among the peoples. You with your arm redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. Hey, this music. Oh man, I'm not laughing at, at the situation, I just, I know that. When the water saw you, oh God, when the water saw you, they were afraid. Indeed, the deep trembled. The clouds poured out water, the skies gave forth thunder. Your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lighted up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea. Your path through the great waters. Yet your footprints were unseen. Wow.
He gets ready. Bravissimo. Bravissimo. I think someone said that there's um, bloopers. We'll check that out, but... Okay, we'll check it out. <clears throat> I like that it said, it's just like, look, I I'm sitting here in my anger, and then I remember your ways. All right, you... You've been kind, you've been good. All this other stuff about the waters thing, I, I need to break down a little bit more to, to fully understand that, but it's... Um... It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Gazillion credits. Okay. Should we move forward? Or are we going to move forward? I got it. I'm glad you said something because we would have sat here for about 10 minutes. Oh, well. Okay. Well, all these people deserve their credit, but you, you've all seen this. Let's get to the bloopers. I was literally going to sit here quietly until the until all that passing. Let me go back. All right, here we go. All right, let's go. Let's see this. Honored who? Honored Of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. The second word. Besides, my father is not yet a believer. That's what Jesus said. Sorry. You know you can just live. <laughs> Are you what do you um, you know you can just come in? <laughs> One more time. I wanted to tell you myself. You're going to ask my father for permission. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Why did you just come in? Oh. You can you know you can do as a <laughs> I'll take that as a no. By decree of Quintus. <laughs> he does something here. <laughs> I always remember that moment. But sometimes in the memory, I forget mm, my it's line. Okay. <laughs> After the joy of having you gone wore off, Eden has actually started to miss you. So you two, uh, to get out of here, huh? <laughs> Don't remember the real line. <laughs> I was close. <laughs> you two get a room. <laughs> Please respect his privacy. Bless us all. Oh, my God. <laughs> wrong prayer. <laughs> no food, no shelter, no clothes. Go out into strange land. He said not to be afraid. Fear is not a thing. You just stop, Andrew. Um, no defenses, no food, no shelter. No defenses. You will be wearing clothes. <laughs> you will be wearing clothes. <laughs> no clothes. No. What's that? <laughs> I'm going back to bed. What? What? Your problem, not mine. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you, Mary. Sin apostle of laughing. Judas, lad, I lost you. And I was running like some kind of crazy man. <laughs> Oh, I man. suppose that I could make some arrangements. Some of me. <laughs> Bug flew in my mouth. <laughs> oh, no. Spit it out. It's good protein. Yes. Good protein. <laughs> I'm leaving. I quit. Everybody hold. Just hold your position. And I also poisoned your bread. Back. What? Yes. It was really hard. You poisoned me? I had to, like, soak it for you the day. Rip. Oh, is that? Is that... Got it. <laughs> that was really the go again. Yeah. Jairus, let's go in. Please stay here. Please. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It's Neander from Nave. <laughs> Let me try that again. It's a scabbard flippity dip. It's. <laughs> Yep, I I forgot that it's okay for me to mess that up. The door was also unlocked, so you could have just right. Sorry, not the time. Are you on his? Whose side are you on? I'm really tired. <laughs> I just woke up. There was a lot that happened. I had to grab a knife. I what didn't. What time is it? Do you need some water? <laughs> Come in. Does anyone have a sundial? <laughs> just too much chest for them. It's too much chest for me. It's too much chest for all of us. You look pretty. <sighs> There's more where that came from. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Three, Three, a prayer. Four, four. Here we play. Wing and a prayer. <laughs> I, wasn't <laughs> ready. I wasn't even looking. <laughs> you say that all the time since we were kids. That's you. Re, you can't. That's not. That doesn't stick. You're really going to. Okay. That's it. That's how you win the game. Complete cheat. <laughs> Sorry, Aaron. Not my strength. Clearly. <laughs> Baby James, how does that wine skin feel? Um. Baby James. <laughs> we, we got come it, we got on, it. Come on, come on. Thanks. We're there. We, we got it. Stiff, not very flexible. <laughs> Here we playing. Ah, uh, I see what you did there. <laughs> ah, you. Ah, you. <laughs> See everything. <laughs> yeah. Yay. That's how I get my robe down. <laughs> and then you do the hokey pokey. Almost there. Just by the door. Ah, oh. oh, welcome back. Oh. Me again? Oh, bye. We setting. <laughs> so, quick visit. <laughs> Making food for the homeless. And Ash. Whoa, Jackal. You're, You're doing here. great. I I haven't started yet. Oh, so it again. <laughs> Keep it short. You know? Oh, like that was perfect before. Would you, Eden? <laughs> can Can you put put it so that the pickles are right in front of me? The cucumbers are right. No. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Ima, there are sheep in... I love a banquet. <laughs> I was going to use that. Just the 12 of us. <laughs> we can make it if we try. Just the 12 of us. You and I. Shalom, my son. Shalom. 
Every single time, every single time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's great. Wonderful. Panavision. Feel nice. Oh, goodness. Okay, well, um, next episode. What's the next episode? There's no next episode. Oh, Lily and something. Yes. Let's go back over here to this screen. I'm still getting used to this. Familia. Oh, what a great season. I feel like it's beginning to take off and really starting to like get momentum, right? Uh, familiar with some of the stories. I'm really glad that I'm not familiar with some of the stories as well because it's like fresh and well, it's new to me. But I... Um, I, I'm just really pleased with this with this season. I've learned so much. There's so many wonderful little messages, and I get I got to hear um, the sermons in a new way, right? Because the visuals help a lot, and um, it is something I'm really excited. I'm really excited about season four. Hopefully, um, hopefully we can make uh, we can make all that happen with with season four. And if you'd like to to contribute to the making of season four, you can always go to the Angel Studios app. And then there's a pay it forward button that you could just click on and then and then just make it free for, for the next for for more people. Sorry, I'm like a little distracted here. But um let's see. Let's hear this message here. It says, Hey man, um would love to see you watch a biblically based documentary called Unseen Realm. It's based off a book by a biblical scholar, Michael Hazer. Even if you don't watch it for the public, just want to help spread the amazing insight on scripture. Um editor, first of all, thank you so much for the for the super chat. Appreciate appreciate the help. Um I would love to watch it. I would like I would love to watch it. If it's okay, um send me an email to I think let me see, I think I have where's my email? Oh no, that's Instagram. I don't know that. Oh yeah, here here's the email. Send me an email here, please. And where link with a link where I can watch it. We'll have a conversation and we'll see how we can um, we can watch it. If you're okay with us watching it together on here, that'd be that'd be that'd be great. I'd like to watch it. Um, if not, um, I'll watch it separately and then I'll give you my 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 thoughts on it. Appreciate that very much. Thank you, um, Familia. I've learned so much. I hope that you've learned a, a lot more. I hope that you enjoy watching these episodes with me. With me, um, I know that. Some people aren't too happy about the pausing and the conversation, but that's what this is about. Not just me watching it. You don't want to just see, watch my face just watching it, but you want a bit of a reaction. I'm, I'm hoping that you want to have a conversation as well and, and, um, and share not just my thoughts, but share your thoughts. I've learned a lot from you all uh, from watching these. I love that I can stop it and ask questions if I have to, because if something's confusing to me or if something doesn't make sense, you all are very quick to tell me, uh, wait, Leo, they're going to explain that later. Or, ah, this person is this character and they played a part in this. I, I love, I love having those conversations with you all. Um, I want to thank you all so much for, for taking the time to, to watch with, with us on this channel, even though a lot of you have already seen it. Um, thank you for dedicating your time. Th thank you for uh, hitting the like button and for sharing it. I don't know. I don't know that these videos are being shared, but I appreciate it. Appreciate it that you share this with other people. Some of these, some of the things that were said are very unique to this episode um, or to this video, and so there are going to be people who missed out on on having this interaction, this conversation uh, with us. And hopefully, for season four, we can we get to watch it again on the channel, and hopefully, we get to have more people on here to have more dis more dis more to discuss. Um, uh, thank you. A special thank you for to Angel Studios for for uh, sponsoring these videos, uh, for sending these cool shirts, and uh, sponsoring the channel with these with these videos. Um, I've had a I've had a blast, and I've I've enjoyed that. And I hope that there were enough people that downloaded the app and and um, and started watching more um, more shows, the other shows on the channel. Uh, but most importantly. Um, well, before I get to the most important uh, gratitude, 
I want to thank the people at The Chosen for dedicating all the time that you do to, to making sure that the lighting is perfect, that, that the, the, the set is designed in a way that is not too distracting, um, that the actors, thank you to the actors who are doing a phenomenal job with, with your acting that I forget that it's acting, even though I comment about lighting and I comment about your, your outfits and I comment about, you know, the body language and all and, and blocking and all that. Like I, I do take, bring attention to that, but I'm really glad that you're doing it in a way that really makes me forget that I'm seeing actors um, on there. And I'm really starting to feel like, man, I'm, I'm not just seeing an actor playing Matthew. I'm seeing Matthew, even though I don't know Matthew. <laughs> um, um, good night, Jackie. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so, and thank you to, to Dallas for your direction, your excellent direction and your attention to detail. Um, thank you to the people who work on sound. The sound is amazing. Sometimes I hear conversations like when, when there's, when there's two characters talking, I hear something and I, and I almost feel like someone's calling me in the other room and it's not, it's just, it's just the, the background noise and it's not too distracting. It just trips me out because I'm, I'm, I'm aware of all that. So, Definitely, um, yes, Patty. Thank you. A prayer for the for the chosen team uh, who are doing a phenomenal job. But also in the team, most importantly, thank you to the writers, to the writers who are, who are making sure that they write that all of the the script is is uh, the way that it should be, and uh, for taking the time to double check and make sure that everything is going to be scriptural, and um, and for taking the time to explain that not that there are some things that are added, and for adding them in a way that's not taking away from the main message right and from the, from the main message of jesus so um appreciate you all so much god bless all of you and may continue to bless you and, and guide your hand and guide your your attention guide your vision uh to creating uh, to creating more beautiful work like this i can't wait for all the other seasons season four in late march oh they're supposed to start filming um hopefully we can work with with the chosen ones again and um and make all that um, spread, get to spread the message, make all that happen. But most importantly, um, we want to thank, we want to thank our father for putting us all together and bringing us closer together to learn more about him. Uh, father, we thank you for bringing us together and learning more about you for reminding us that you are here, that you're always here with us that you walk on top of the things that drown us, that, that the lines that we've created that divide us racially and socially are invisible lines and that we should be slowly using your son as an eraser of those lines, of those invisible lines. And we should see people who we see as different from us, people that we see outside of our circle as part of our circle and that we see that they too were invited to the same, to the same banquet, to the same party and that we learn to mingle with them in peace. Father, please remind us that every single time that, that we see someone who's uh, homeless, who's in need, that it is you who is in need and that we, we worship you and we show our gratitude for the things that you give us by giving to them and treating them the way that you have treated us when we were in need. Father, even though some of us are, are, are have our homes, we are in need and you provide, you provide for, for us. And let us, let us remember that there are people who do not have homes, who are out living in the cold, who are, are forgotten, who the world steps over and ignores, um, and let us remember to, to give to them like you give to us, which is give, give to them freely and without uh, asking for anything in return. Father, we ask that you, that you heal, that your healing spirit moves to those who need healing. That we ask that you see the needs of others and that you provide them with exactly what they need and more if it is your will. We think we are grateful for your wisdom. We're grateful for your wisdom because you know what we need. And sometimes what we think that we need isn't what we need. And you are very patient in humbling us and, and reminding us that, that the things that we want sometimes may hinder us. And so you don't give the, give us those things. And we trust your wisdom over our own father. 
thank you for for um, answering the prayers of all those that are requesting prayers from you now for the people who are learning to let go of their addictions learning to let go of the things that do not make them shine father please help them soften their grip on this world and help them to let go of it and to hold your hand and to walk with you and to move with your peace and to move with your kindness and to move with your love and that your love shine in them and through them. Teach them, remind them, let your peace and your patience shine in them so that when they're confronted with the world, they can release your peace and release your love and release your, your compassion. <clears throat> Most importantly, Father, please show them to look for you in all places and in all people. May they not use their own wisdom, but your wisdom to know when a message is coming from you and when it's coming from the dark one who wants to keep them in this world so you can continue to harm them and keep them in their hole. Reach your hand down and pull them from their hole, from that hole that they find themselves in. Reach your hand and pull them from, under, from underneath the water. Let them walk with you and never let them go, Father. In your precious Son's name we pray. Amen. May that please remember to use the use Jesus as the great eraser to erase those lines that we've created to divide other people. To erase concepts and ideas that are harmful to one another, that do not show his love, that do not show that you come from him. There are ideas and beliefs that you hold now that are not serving him. Learn to learn to be learn to get rid of them. And if you don't know, if you don't trust yourself, trust him. <laughs> He'll tell you. All right, um, Edgar, the knowledge keeper. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll check the email shortly. I'm gonna get some food in my stomach. Um, we want to thank you, and Eric and I would like to thank you. And uh, Hermanita Dori, if you're still on here, I want to say thank you so much for. Yes, so for the gifts goodness. we received, we received your gifts. It's more than we could have ever have hoped for. So thank you for sending the gifts. Thank um, you. We, we will put them to use, and you will see pictures <laughs> of baby baby Ezekiel in Where the pouch. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure I'm not going to let him let him uh, out of my sight. No, uh, it was, it's it's really adorable. I don't know how to like. <clears throat> I don't know how to put it on, but Leonardo yeah. will figure it out. Yeah, and a shout a shout out also, and a thank a special thank you to Mama Bear who also sent us these oh, beautiful little yeah. gifts. She said she sent us this little rattle and a little like a spit up cloth. Um, yeah, that, that was really cute. It's it's so beautiful. Um, He's so. gonna be here quicker than we know. Yeah, fast, quick, and in a hurry. Yeah, he's almost he's almost here. Yeah, as as you can tell, I'm about, looks like I'm ready to pop. <sighs> Look at that! Just it, a few more weeks. I know it's crazy from like think like when you did the first episode, like my stomach was like. Well, yeah, it's grown, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. He's moving. He was moving a lot. He's like, oh, you should see him. Oh, yeah. You should see him. Um, he loves uh, Leon Bridges. That song that we covered on here, we play it, and he's just like he's he just loves soul music. I think yeah, he's mm -hmm. he's he's got good taste. Oh, and I and I play flamenco music in the car for him, and I'm and I'm sitting there like yeah, ole, yeah. and he's just in there like dancing. I don't know. He's probably like in there like. <laughs> yeah, his foot yeah. is on this side, so it like rolls, or he does like a little he, like does like this little kick, and I'm like, man, my son is over there, like just enjoying great music. Yeah, so thank you, um, Erica Ruiz. We will definitely be praying for Juan Ruiz. Yes. All right, everyone. Please take care of yourselves. Be kind and loving, and patient with yourself and with others. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you on our next adventure. Peace. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>